name Bismillah. Thousands of years ago, there was a wonderful, righteous family known as the family of Imran. In some traditions outside the Quran, Imran was known as Saint Joachim or Joachim, and his wife was known as Saint Anne or Anna. You might find different names here and there, but just a quick reference. So Ali Imran, the family of Imran, such righteous family, people who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, great servants even to the people, very helpful, very supportive. One day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed that the wife of Imran, she became pregnant. And when she became pregnant, she made a promise to Allah. She said, A'udhu billahi in the rajim I begin by seeking Allah's refuge from the devil. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah. We say that before we start reading the ayat. She said, Rabbi inni nadartu laka ma fi batani muharrara. O Allah, I dedicate whatever is in my womb. This baby I have here, ya Allah, I will dedicate it entirely just for you to worship you and to provide service in the holy temple, fi bayt al maqdis. So, what's the two things? I want to dedicate that baby to grow and worship you, Allah, alone, and to help and to serve people in the place of worship. Fataqabbal minni. Oh Allah, please help me do that to my child. Ya Allah, help me be the best possible mother. And the best mothers in the world are the ones who teach their kids la ilaha illallah. May Allah make our mothers, our sisters, our daughters of such caliber. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Innaka anta samiul alim. She said, oh Allah, God, you hear my request. You hear my begging and you know my intention. And her time of pregnancy continues. She was hoping, brothers and sisters, to have that child to grow to be as righteous as possible. Some narrations said that her husband, Imran, passed away before the delivery and Allah knows best. And eventually, as the pregnancy and the stomach got bigger and bigger and the due date approached, contractions began. And what happened? She delivered. When she delivered the baby, she said, Oh Allah, oh my God, it's a girl. She's talking to Allah. She had that connection, that relationship with Allah, that she would talk to him, she would to vent to him. Then she said, Allah says in the Quran, Wallahu a'lamu bima wada'at. And Allah knows exactly what was the gender of the baby. And God says, the male is not like the female. There are some things the male can do which the female cannot do. And there are things which the female can do and the male cannot do. Some of the, the genders have special qualities. Maryam. And oh Allah, this baby, I named her Maryam. And ya Allah, I beg you. I want to make a request from you right from the get-go. What is it? What do you think she will pray to Allah to do to that child? What's the first request she has right now? Oh Allah, protect my baby from shaitan. Ya Allah, protect my baby from the devil. The devil who tries to poke every baby and disturb them in every possible way, all the way till they meet God. Ya Allah, protect my daughter, not just my daughter, Maryam, and her progeny, and her children, and whoever she has in her descendants, protect them all, the accursed devil. And right then and there, brothers and sisters, Allah protected Maryam alayhi salam. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, look what he said. He said, Kullu mawlud, every baby that is born, shaitan tries to poke them, tries to disturb them. You see how evil he is? Even to the cutest beings, the babies, they are not saved from his harm, from his influence. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, but he could not disturb Maryam alayhi salam. May Allah protect me and my children and all those who are watching and their children from the shaitan. Ameen rabbal alameen. The mother of Maryam, did she fulfill the promise? 
Some of us, we say, Wallahi, I swear to God, when I become a millionaire, I will donate this and that. You became a millionaire. Now what are you donating? Let's see Maryam, the mother of Maryam. When she got the baby, she kept her promise. Yes, what was her promise? I will grow this child. I will nurture this child. I will teach this child the worship of Allah and devout her completely to Allah and to the service of the people that love Allah. Brothers and sisters, Allah says, فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَابُولٍ حَسَنٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he accepted Maryam graciously with love and kind. وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتًا حسنا. And Maryam alayhi salam, Allah blessed her. She's growing such a great upbringing. May Allah make our children righteous. Say ameen. Ameen. And as Maryam started to get older, she was special. It was clear. She is special. The way she worships Allah, the way she respects her mom, the way she deals with the people with adab, respect, high character. Her mother, brothers and sisters, started to look for teachers, coaches, universities, huh? to take care of the growth of Maryam alayhi salam. You might say, man, she's uh, pushing for this. No, don't complain about that. That's one of the greatest pushing a parent can ever do to a child to learn more about the religion, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We live at times where we celebrate when a parent takes their young child to soccer practice and football practice and baseball and this and that from a young age and people praise the parents for their patience and the mileage they drive all the way to other cities for some sports, nothing against that. But how could we not celebrate the greatest training, the greatest sport, the greatest act, which is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maryam alayhi salam, peace be upon her, she was exceptional. The mother of Maryam did not go begging people who will take care of my daughter, who will sponsor her. Nah, the people were begging the mother of Maryam. Can you please allow us to sponsor your daughter? Can you please uh, be the university that gives her a full ride scholarship? And they were fighting over her. Nah, they were fighting. يختصمون. Allah says in the Quran, they were arguing, who will take care of Maryam? I will take care of Maryam. No, I will take care of Maryam. They're fighting. It got so tough, so intense that they were drawing lots. They were drawing lots, throwing pens, and then making uh, one narration says that a young boy will pick up the pen. Any pen he picks up, the owner of the pen will be the one who cares for Maryam. Of course, the people who did that, they were the scholars, people are worthy to take care of Maryam alayhi salam. When who did God will to be the caretaker? Do you know who took care of Maryam? Who won? Who was it? Ahsantum. May Allah bless you. Some of you, I believe they got it right. Wa Zakariya. It was a prophet of Allah, Zakariya alayhi salam, the one who took care of Maryam. Ya Allah, Bismillah. What did he do? He took such great care of Maryam that he built her a mihrab, a sanctuary. He built her a place of worship around the holy temple and Bayt al-Maqdis. It's like Maryam has her own gym, right? That's how special she was. We build you this thing just for you. And he provided her with all the food, nutrition, any necessities for her to survive, to educate, to grow, to learn more about the religion. And imagine her teacher is a prophet of God. Brothers and sisters, she learned more about God. Her worship to Allah increased. He's on a whole other level. May Allah bless us, make you and I steadfast. Say ameen, ameen rabbal alameen. She would perhaps fast some days when people may be you know, busy doing things like that, some stuff are good that they're doing, but her worship to Allah was on a whole other level. At night, when people might be sleeping, nothing wrong with sleeping, she takes it to the next level. She worships Allah at night, a whole other level. May Allah increase our level. Say, I mean, Allah can increase your faith. And the more you hear about great people, the more your faith increases, God willing. God, Allah praised Maryam. Wow, what did he, what did he praise about her? Look what he says. Mary, the daughter of Imran. 
She was someone who was beautiful inside and outside. She was beautiful. And without a doubt, you know, men were all around, would love to be with someone like her. But she never, ever got into an inappropriate relationship. Never, never did she touch a man she's not supposed to touch. Ahsanat Farja, very respectful lady. Never got into the haram. May Allah make our relationships halal. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. Brothers and sisters, Maryam's status and closeness to Allah continued to grow and become stronger. So much so. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Zakariya alayhi salam, alayhi salam was supposed to take care of Maryam and all that good stuff. He would walk into her sanctuary, her place of worship. He finds food, drink, provisions. He did not supply that to her. He is shocked. How is it possible you have this food? How did you get that? Zakariya alayhi salam. He has like a 24-7 service for Maryam alayhi salam. Anytime he, she calls him, she needs him, he comes right away. He's always there, security, everything, the top-notch college, right? Zakaria alayhi salam, how did he get this? And the food you're getting is not even its season. Like this is a miraculous miracle over miracle. So Maryam, she tells her teacher, Zakaria, she says, Huwa min indi Allah. You see this? It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No human being was involved in the process. It's from Allah. Inna Allah yarzuku man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab. Allah gives whoever he wants without limit, without accountability. And here, brothers and sisters, do you notice something? Allah is showing Maryam. Allah is showing Zakaria and the people how Allah can deliver food, can deliver drink, can deliver provisions to Maryam, to her place without any human being involved in the process. And as she continued to worship Allah, she prayed and supplicated her work ethics as a whole next level. You might say, man, that's a lot of work, a lot of effort to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can I please do an emergency landing right now and talk about our times for a second? You hear about athletes in our time playing right now. They spend one point five million dollars on their body to maintain a healthy condition to play basketball right and you hear about these athletes you hear about an, a soccer player who works so hard to be who he is and he grows and grows and grows Maryam alayhi salam the better example she prays to Allah to grow in her faith to draw closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but brothers and sisters her closest to Allah is not normal. It's above average. It's above ev any woman so far. Brothers and sisters, besides the wife of Pharaoh Asiel, may Allah be pleased by her. What happened? When Maryam was, was in her sanctuary, someone was calling her name. Ya Maryam. There's no one here. Ya Maryam. Oh Maryam. Who is it? It was the angels. Maryam reached a level where the angels are communicating with her. Allahu Akbar. وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمْ The angel said, O oh Maryam, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَاكَ Allah has favored you. Allah has chosen you. Yes, the way she is, is indeed special. وَطَهَّرَكَ And Allah purified you. But check this out. Ready? وَاصْطَفَاكَ and Allah is going to favor you again in a way that he never favored any woman in the world like this before. What's that second upgrade of choosing and favoring? You will see that shortly. But that's the fruit of working so hard. Brothers and sisters, one day as Maryam alayhi salam, she leaves her place of worship, her sanctuary. And usually she does not leave unless it's a necessity. She's studying, she's worshiping Allah, doing dhikr, remembrance of God. One day she leaves and goes a distance away from the holy temple, Bayt al-Maqdis, away from the people. And all of a sudden, she, as she was all alone, an unknown man approaches her. Okay, what just happened? Who are you? 
She says, إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ مِنْكَ إِنْ كُنْتَ تَقِيَّةِ إذا بتخاف الله لا تقرب If you fear Allah, don't come close to me If you fear Allah, get away from me I seek Allah the most merciful protection She feels like, were you following me? How did you come here? How did I not notice you from the beginning? إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ I seek God's protection And sometimes to know the true color of people is during hardship And she remembered God right away قال, This man spoke قال, إنما, You know who I am? I am a messenger from God, from the one you're asking help from. I'm a messenger from him. What do you want? So I can grant you, so I can be the means in which you will have a pure, wonderful, wonderful child. Wonderful child? How can I be blessed with a child no man ever touched me and I've never done anything like haram or anything like that for me to have a child Jibreel alayhi salam the angel says will it is so will it be there's there's not it's not an option Maryam your lord said it is easy on Allah to do that Okay, what's the wisdom? Like, why would I be pregnant without having a husband? Like this mir miracle pregnancy, why? Do you guys know why? Someone asks you, why would Allah do that? Do we know in the Quran, Allah says, وَلِنَجْعَلَهُ آيَةً لِلنَّاسِ So Isa ibn Maryam, or the child that she will have, so he can be a sign for humanity, alama. So that people can see Allah's strength so people can see how Allah is all capable. Allah Qadir, Allah can do anything. And he can get a child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can have a woman deliver a child without that woman having a man or a husband. Allahu Akbar. What's the other wisdom? And this child she will have will be a means of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will be a blessing to the world. And Jibreel blew the soul Allah assisted into Maryam alayha salam, brothers and sisters, that blow reaches the womb of Maryam, فحملت. she became pregnant. She conceived that child, brothers and sisters. When she got pregnant, she was very concerned. She was so concerned as, as to what the people will say, how will she handle this test? And some narrations suggested that she was recognized eventually after a couple months, two, three, five, six months, that you know what, the signs of pregnancy. So someone asked her, someone righteous asked Maryam. He said, Maryam, how can there be a plant without a seed? How can there be a plant Without a seed, this man, that person is indicating you being pregnant. How? So Maryam alayha salam, she tells this guy, tells this person, just like how Allah created Adam without parents. Allah does not need a seed to create a plant. Allah can create a plant without a seed. Brothers and sisters, and the due date was approaching. Her stomach grew, Maryam alayhi salam. Nine months pregnancy like any other woman. فَانْتَبَذَتْ بِهِ مَكَانًا قَصِيًّا Maryam alayhi salam withdrew to an away, far away, remote place, away from the sight of people. All of a sudden, the contractions started to take place. فَأَجَاءَهَا الْمَخَاضُ إِلَىٰ جِذْعِ النَّخْلَةِ the pain of the labor caused her to go all the way to the palm tree. She's resting. She's going through that labor process. May Allah have mercy on every mother who delivered. May Allah have mercy on them. May Allah forgive all their shortcomings for that hardship that they went through. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Maryam alayhi salam struggling and struggling. And all of that, she's going through this hardship. She's wondering, can I pass this test? Can I do this? And look what she says. I wish 
as she was going through the contractions, she said, I wish I was dead. I wish and I wish that I would never be known and I would always be forgotten. Is it okay to wish death? She was so scared that this test, she may fail and lose her faith. So then brothers and sisters, Allah wills, Maryam, Alhamdulillah, what happened? She delivered the baby. And the baby spoke from underneath her. What did he say? He's telling her, don't be sad. Allahu Akbar. Don't be sad. Don't worry. Allah gave underneath you some pure water. Drink some water. Drink some water. There's some water under you. And shake that palm tree. Then some dates will fall upon you so you can eat. Allahu Akbar. Allah's teaching Maryam. Just you know, you know, shake that palm tree. No one, you cannot shake a palm tree. I cannot shake a palm tree. But Allah's teaching Maryam, teaching you and I to take the means and Allah will take care of the rest. You do what you can and I will take care of you for the rest of your life. And indeed, Maryam alayhi salam, she took the advice. Then when she got that dates, yes, it fell. Allahu Akbar. The, the palm tree was shaken and the dates have fallen. Then that child says, Fakuli, eat. Mom, eat. Washrabi, drink, drink. Wa relax and put your heart at ease. Fa minal bashari ahadan fakuli. And if you ever see anyone, if you ever see anyone, then tell them. Tell them, do, do a sign for them that I promise not to speak to anyone. I am fasting, not from food and drink. I am fasting from talking. And she took that advice. And Maryam alayhi salam, brothers and sisters, she carries her son who was named Isa. He was named Jesus and she returned back to the people. Now her heart is strong. She did the work, she put the effort, Allah strengthens her. She brought that baby to the people and the people saw that. They were shocked, they were angry. Ya Maryam, O Mary, how dare you? you? You did such a horrible act. Shame on you, Maryam. Oh, the sister of Aaron, your father was not a bad guy. And your mom was not an immodest woman. What's wrong, what's wrong with you? How can such act come from such family. You come from a good family. Look at you. You got this child? Astaghfirullah. How could you? Remember, she promised not to speak. That was the instructions she got. Then she pointed at the baby. They said to her, what do you mean pointing to the baby? You want us to talk to the baby? We can't even talk to you. We can't even get a response from you as an adult. You want us to talk to a baby and expect a response? And the baby speaks. Isa ibn Maryam, Isa, Jesus, the son of Mary speaks. And the first thing he says, Qala inni abdullah. The baby spoke. The baby, not even few days old, he says, I am the slave of Allah. The first thing he told the world, I am the slave of Allah. Inni abdullah. Atani al kitab wa ja'alani nabiya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me the scripture and made me a prophet. I'm a prophet of God. Wa ja'alani mubarakan aynama kunt. And I am blessed. Allah made me a blessing wherever I go, wherever I am. Wa awsani bis salah. And he told me, Allah told me to pray. How was your prayers? Allah told me to pray. 
والزكاه, and to give charity, obligatory charity, ما دمت حيا, as long as I'm alive, وبرم بوالدتي, and after God told me to worship him, right after that, God told me to take care of my mom, to be respectful to my mom. That baby is saying this, people are shocked. How is this possible? Sentences that are powerful. And Allah did not make me a tyrant, an arrogant person, because whoever is not good to their mom is arrogant. Whoever is not good to their mom is someone who it needs to be humbled. May Allah protect us and make us respectful. Ameen. وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيًّا And look to what he says. وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيَّ يَوْمَ وُلِتْ And peace be upon me the day I was born. وَيَوْمَ أَمُوتْ And the day I die. وَيَوْمَ أُبْعَثُ حَيَّا And the day I am resurrected. This, brothers and sisters, was the story of Maryam alayhi salam. How she went through all of this. But what happened next? The mission of Maryam has been fulfilled in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Hasbuka min nisa'il alameen. Look what he says. He said, do you want a role model from the woman to look up to? He said, it's enough for you to look at Maryam ibn Ta Imran. Maryam. Maryam, the daughter of Imran, the greatest role model for every woman and man. Brothers and sisters, you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Maryam and her level of worship? In this world, if you go to do a 100 meter race, usually in the Olympics, you have the males and then you have the females, two different categories. And people will complain, it's not fair to mix them together, the male and the female to speed because the biology and the body and things like that. You know what? Things like that may happen. Some people may be taller than the other, so they cannot reach to certain levels because of height, no problem. But the race to Allah is a race that anyone can join. The race to Allah, the competition to Allah, everyone can join. Men and women. And you know what Allah said about Maryam? He didn't just say she beat the woman, but she also beat the men. The men. How? What did Allah say about Maryam? And she was of the greatest devout worshipping woman. No. She was the best of men and women. She was one who reached perfection. This was the story of Maryam alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, many things happened after that. But I'll share with you one hadith. So something for us to learn about la ilaha illallah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never had a son or a daughter, brother or sister, mom or, or dad. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah said, and we'll end with this. Ready? He says, كَذَّبَنِي ibni Adam. My servant, my slave, the son of Adam, the children of Adam, the human beings, many of them. What happened, Ya Allah? They made a lie against me. They claim that I cannot bring the dead people back to life. The people claim that I cannot bring the dead people back to life. And the children of Adam did another thing. They didn't just lie about me. But shatamani and the children of Adam, they cursed me. How is it, Ya Allah? The children of Adam, they curse me. They curse Allah. We say bad things about Allah. How? He said, Allah says, some human beings, they say that I have a son. So Allah says, I'm free from ever having a spouse or ever having a child. So let's do our best to respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by not attributing things to Allah and not encouraging such attributions to Allah. And may Allah allow us to see Maryam alayhi salam in the highest levels of Jannah. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. This was a summary. And inshallah, I will pass the microphone to Sister Hafsa. Jazakumullah khairan for your patience.